Number one, install blackout curtains in your room. So what are blackout curtains? They're essentially curtains that you install which will not let light come into your room. So when you're sleeping during the night, you will not get disturbed from light coming in and you will not have fragmented sleep. You'll be, you'll be able to sleep for eight to nine hours peacefully and, and, and wake up in a very relaxed way and enable optimization of your testosterone levels. So in the beginning, it might seem a little weird because your room will be really dark. I had a friend actually text me the other day. He said he's installed blackout curtains. Now his sex drive is, is, is improving. His sleep is improving. He's very relaxed and, and, and he's never like taking naps and stuff like he used to. But when he first started, he would start running into things at night. So when he would go to the bathroom to, to pee or whatever, he would start running into his, uh, his bed. So, you know, use a, use a light uh, in the beginning. Your, your body, your, your brain will not be used to having so much darkness in the room but it helps tremendously. I have been a very good sleeper. Even though I didn't sleep at the right times and, and for, for the right duration, it is very easy for me to fall asleep. But with blackout curtains, it made it even better. It made my sleep even easier and it made me sleep for even a longer period of time to optimize my testosterone levels. In addition to installing blackout curtains, Eliminate all other sources of light from your room. So if you have LEDs that are turned on on your cell phone or on your laptop, or maybe you have little night lights, eliminate all of that. You want complete darkness in your room when you're going to sleep. Number two, eat foods that contain lots of zinc. Zinc is one of the minerals which is deficient in many, many people. I also had zinc deficiency. So what foods contain zinc? Cashews contain zinc, red meat contains zinc, oysters contain zinc. You can also take a supplement that is recommended in this plan known as ZMA. The Z in ZMA stands for zinc and the MA is magnesium aspartate. I will get into why you should take magnesium in, later in this video, but in terms of zinc, you need to have zinc for optimal testosterone production. There was a study that showed Guys who had marginal deficiency in zinc, when they increased their zinc levels by taking zinc supplements, their testosterone levels increased. So zinc is necessary. Today, go out there, eat some cashews, eat red meat, maybe eat a few oysters, and you will be on your way to eliminating your zinc deficiency. Now remember, you may not be deficient in zinc. You may have marginal zinc deficiency to make sure you have to go take a blood test which measures your zinc levels. Most of my friends who have taken zinc tests, they have seen deficiency in zinc in their body. And I also saw deficiency in zinc in my body. You may have it, you may not have it. And remember, it is not so simple as how much zinc you are consuming. Zinc also has to be absorbed by your bloodstream. So if you are taking in zinc, but the way your body works, maybe it's something to do with genetics, maybe other molecules are fighting for absorption in your bloodstream. So for example, zinc competes with copper and zinc also competes with calcium. So if you have a lot of calcium in your diet, you have a lot of copper in your diet or already in your body, then zinc will not be able to be absorbed in an optimal way. So I'm just letting you know this because just remember it's complex, there's individual variability. So just like any supplement you take, any lifestyle change that you make, consult your doctor if you're not sure and read the resources that are contained in the ebook to learn more. Number four, eat foods today that contain a lot of magnesium. Just like we spoke about zinc, a lot of people are zinc deficient, a lot of people are also magnesium deficient. So what foods contain magnesium? Spinach contains magnesium. A lot of other leafy vegetables contain magnesium. Go and eat a lot of spinach today. I recommend you eat cooked spinach. Maybe add a little bit of spices, saute the spinach, and you will love eating this because eating spinach with other meals adds a lot of taste, a lot of flavor, and this is the way you can get enough magnesium for the day. Now, if you are very, very magnesium deficient or you need to increase your magnesium intake right now, you need to take ZMA and that is recommended in this plan. 
ZMA contains magnesium aspartate and it's usually about 450 milligrams. If you take ZMA, you will increase your testosterone levels. Now, how do I know that? There was a study done where they looked at NCAA Division II football players. They gave them ZMA for eight weeks and then they had another group of the same level of football players and they gave them a placebo. And what they found is that just after eight weeks, the players that were given ZMA had a 30% increase in testosterone levels. The players that were given the placebo only had an increase of 10%. In addition, the players that were given the ZMA had 2.5 times the muscle strength gains than those that were given the placebo. So magnesium is important for muscle mass as well as important for general testosterone increase. Number four, get sunlight. And the reason you want sunlight is so you can get vitamin D. If you can't get sunlight or you're unable to get sunlight for whatever reason, then take vitamin D supplementation that is recommended in this plan or eat foods that have vitamin D in them. So for example, eat fatty fish such as salmon, which is recommended in this plan. It was shown in a study where guys who had a deficient vitamin D level, when they were given vitamin D supplementation, their testosterone levels increased significantly and became normal just with, vi just with vitamin D supplementation. Number five, make sure that there are no other sensory stimuli in your room or in your house that disturb sleep that cause you to have fragmented sleep, which is bad for testosterone levels. So what I mean by that is if there's any auditory stimulus, any sound that is coming into your room or any sensory stimulus at all. Now, if, you have, if you're having sex, that's fine. That's good for testosterone. So that kind of sensory stimulation is very much recommended. Go for it. But if, if you're not doing that, that is the only exception. If you're not doing that and you have any kind of weird noise or, or smell or anything that is coming into your room that is going to disturb your sleep, get rid of it. Do whatever you can to get rid of it. Now, white noise stimuli are okay. So for example, let's say your AC is going on or you have a, maybe your refrigerator is on and it's making noise. Those types of noises are white noise. They are continuous. They don't have different frequencies all the time. It is a very stable sound. So those are okay. Those may even help you sleep. They help me sleep. Number five, eliminate all sensory stimuli from your environment which may disturb your sleep and cause fragmented sleep. So what do I mean by that? Auditory stimuli, any olfactory stimuli, any kind of sound that is coming in that is random. So for example, let's say you have a random sound from your neighborhood that comes in or some, some sounds that are coming in during the middle of the night that disturb your sleep and make you wake up. Try to eliminate those sounds. Now, I know sometimes it's, it's hard. Maybe, let's say you live near traffic or you have some sound that you, there's no way you can eliminate from your environment. Then what I recommend is get a white noise machine. White noise is noise. It's a sound wave which contains all the frequencies and wavelengths out there. So, for example, the refrigerator, this sound that's or your air conditioner or any kind of continuous sound that is soothing that is okay. That is going to help you sleep. It helps me sleep. I, I hear the refrigerator all the time when I'm sleeping and, and that's good for me. And I actually, without it, I actually feel that, that I'm not sleeping well. So that's fine. Make sure you eliminate all sensory stimuli. But if you can't, use a white noise machine to help you. Don't use earplugs. It is shown that earplugs are actually going to desensitize your auditory system and may lead to even more harmful effects. So don't use earplugs at night, but feel free to use a white noise machine. And I also recommend you go on the internet or you read a book about specifically what white noise is. And again, just like any other lifestyle change, consult your doctor for more information. Number six, meditate. Now, as a scientist, I can tell you that meditation has benefits that are proven by science. They have done studies with Buddhist monks in the University of Wisconsin where they show that as a Buddhist monk sits in an fMRI machine, which is magnetic resonance imaging, they, they image your brain, different parts of the brain while you are meditating. And they've shown that the parts of the brain which separate 
our bodies from the environment get shut off a little bit. So you feel like you're one with the environment. You feel that you are more relaxed, that you are more peaceful. So when people who meditate a lot, they tell you that, all of these things are rooted in science. So go and meditate. Meditation may not have a direct effect on your testosterone levels, but it will definitely have an indirect effect. How? Meditation calms you down. We have a lot of stress during the day. When you have stress in your body, cortisol is released. Cortisol is a hormone, which is catabolic. It will break down your muscle. So stress is going to enable that breakdown of muscle. By meditation, which lowers stress, you will be able to avoid that kind of catabolism in your body. So I recommend you go out there today, meditate for five minutes. If you have never meditated in your life, don't even worry about the technique, how you should sit, what you should think. Just sit in a certain corner of your room, on your bed, anywhere that is comfortable, and just be peaceful for five minutes. And then you can increase that time to maybe 10, 10 minutes, 20 minutes uh, at different times of the day that are convenient for you. There are plenty of resources on meditation. You can go look up on the internet. You can read books about it. You can read scientific papers about it, especially the ones I just mentioned. My own experience with meditation is meditation actually helps me wake up a little bit. So it's kind of weird. Whenever I feel sleepy during the day, which rarely happens now, but back in the day, it used to happen all the time. When I would feel like I needed to take a nap or I needed to sleep, I would just meditate. I would sit there, close my eyes, think about nothing, and just feel relaxed. And after meditating for about 20 minutes, I woke up and I was ready for the day again. Number seven, intermittent fasting. Today, if you're gonna eat a certain number of calories, eat those same number of calories, but pick a duration of time to eat them. So for example, from 12.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., that eight-hour window, eat calories only during that window, and that will enable testosterone increase and optimal testosterone levels. I will explain exactly how that happens, all the anabolic effects of testosterone, as well as why intermittent fasting is important in a later video. Number eight, eat the majority of your carbohydrates after you do resistance training. So today, when you go lift weights, or you sprint, or you do any type of resistance training, eat the majority of your carbs after that. So the rice, the potatoes, the beans, whatever you're eating, and these are all recommended in this plan. It, this theory is known as carb backloading. You're essentially eating the majority of your, of your carbs at the end of the day after your resistance training because it enables a greater rate of muscle mass development than fat mass development. So, eat your carbs after resistance training. Number nine, eat good fats. So, eat an avocado, eat some almonds, eat a steak. It is known that monounsaturated fats, as well as saturated fats that are contained in, for example, steak, are good for testosterone synthesis. The ability to synthesize testosterone is because of cholesterol in the body, as we already talked about in a previous video. So, make sure you eat a lot of good fats, go out there and grab an avocado. Number 10, do HIT or SIT. What the hell does that mean? So HIT is H-I-I-T, High Intensity Interval Training, and SIT is S-I-T, Sprint Interval Training. Specifically in this plan, we will do SIT. It essentially means that you sprint for 30 seconds and then you take a break. Then you sprint for 30 seconds, you take a break, you do this four to six times. So do that today. If you do that, it will enable a increase in fat loss as well as an increase in testosterone production. We will talk about the science, the details of all of this in a later video. Number 11. Compound exercises. So compound exercises are those that enable you to use multiple muscle groups at the same time. And compound exercises allow you to use the big muscle groups. For example, the muscle groups like you're in your leg, in your glutes, and, the, and for example, also your back. So what I want you to do is today, go do some squats, go do some bench presses, go do some deadlifts. Number 12. 
eat a very high protein and carbohydrate meal right after your resistance training. Why do you need to eat both of these? So, well, before I get into that, what are both of these? Protein are contained in things like meat, chicken, fish. Carbohydrates are rice, potatoes, and all of these are written in detail in this plan. So, eat both of these after your resistance training to A, enable an increase in muscle mass when your body enters an anabolic state at night when you're sleeping, and you want to increase testosterone production. Carbohydrates are necessary for testosterone production. So when carbohydrates are taken away from a diet, testosterone levels decrease. So you need both a carbohydrate as well as a protein-rich meal after resistance training today. Number 13, drink a bunch of water. I want you right now to go grab a cup of water and drink it, and then drink another, and then drink another, because water is so essential for your body. I'm not just saying it's gonna increase testosterone production, no. I'm saying it's also gonna improve your skin. It's also gonna make you feel good. It's gonna keep you hydrated. It will minimize dehydration in places which have a lot of sun, in which you sweat a lot. You need to drink at least 1.5 to 2 gallons of water every day. It is not easy to drink a lot of water. Some people just think they're getting enough water, even if they're not. I wasn't getting enough water. My dad used to tell me every day, dude, drink water, drink water, drink water. And I never listened. But then after I started reading the benefits of water, I realized that water is very important. Without drinking a lot of water, the nutrients that you're eating, the nutrients that this plan is telling you to eat, you will not be able to absorb these nutrients. Your digestive system will not be able to digest the foods that you're eating in an optimum way unless you drink enough water. If you just woke up in the morning, go drink water. If this is nighttime and you're about to go to sleep, drink water. When you are eating meals, drink water. Don't drink anything but water with your meals. Number 14, win track your wins, celebrate your wins. What do I mean by that? So my personal story, when I first started following this plan, I would write down little tick marks when I drank one cup of water or one bottle of water. And every time I did that, I felt good because I am undertaking a process to increase my testosterone levels. Every time I did a set in the gym, let's say I finished an amazing deadlift set or an amazing squat set, I would put a little tick mark or a little check mark in my book that I finished that set, and that made me feel good. Now, I know this may sound weird that, oh, I'm tracking my how many water bottles I drink and, and what is this concept of winning, but all of this is established in neuroscience. If you go read, as I mentioned previously, the book The Winner Effect by Ian Robertson, who's also a neuroscientist, it explains very simply how winning increases testosterone levels. So for example, soccer fans that watch their teams win, their testosterone level increases. People who play chess and they win, their testosterone level increases. And it's not just the winning of it, it's also the actual competition. It's the outlook on life, it's the positive psychology, the lower stress levels that you have. And by appreciating your wins, by actually celebrating your wins, you will undergo this positive psychology and it is highly, highly recommended for testosterone increase and optimum testosterone. And finally, number 15, throw away harmful plastics that are in your house or anywhere in your environment. Harmful plastics are those plastics that contain BPA or bisphenol A. This ingredient in plastics is harmful because as I mentioned previously in another video, it converts testosterone into estrogen. So go into your house and throw away these plastics. How are you gonna figure out if a plastic has bisphenol A? It's very simple. Take the container, look at the bottom, and if it has a triangle which has a one, two, or five in it, it means it does not have bisphenol A. However, if there's a triangle with a seven inside, it could have bisphenol A. So call the manufacturer, ask if this has bisphenol A. If it does, throw it away. And in terms of plastic water bottles, get rid of those two if you can. 
And I recommend in this plan to get a glass water bottle so you are always drinking water from a glass water bottle. So those were the 15 ways through which you can increase your testosterone today. But remember, in order to have lasting effects on your testosterone levels, it's gonna take some time. For me, just in a matter of weeks, I started noticing differences in my sexual performance, in my sexual energy, in my sexual stamina, in my sexual appetite, desire, just overall sexual health was significantly better by following this plan as well as following these 15 steps in particular. For you, yes, these 15 steps, however many you do them, will increase your testosterone levels, but in order to cause a lasting change, long-term change. You need to do them for a long period of time and continue to do them throughout your life.